Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. All right, so today at the K Organics Farm in Hamburg, I'm gonna show you guys how I make some of my plant juices or my fermented teas. Um, this is calcium solution. It's Cal Mag Post. I get it in eggshells. We use vinegar. I sell it on my website. You can buy it. I sell it in 15 or 30 milliliters. Uh, I'm also gonna be using. My hemp, my fermented hemp, hemp juice. It smells so good. I swear, it's like ridiculous that we haven't had this, but now we do. <laughs> um, this is Artemisia. This is fermented Artemisia. It smells incredible. It's just such a unique smell. This is uh, plant juice, and then this is banana. This is one of the this is one of the big parts of the solution that I use because it has chip mace. I'll show you. You can tell on the top it's fermenting. It's almost smell alcoholic, alcoholic-y too. Yeah. This seems to ferment the best. I get a lot of good results with the banana. It works really well, and these are more like medicine. And I just do it all together. It seems to work pretty well. I haven't really honed in the science, but I feel like just mixing them all together, letting them sit for a day or two, and then pouring them on my, my plants seems to work really well. I mean, look at this. You know, this is just in a container. I'm not, you know, I'm not even, that's not even in the ground. That's in a 30 gallon container, and it's just, it's going nuts. It's taking over my driveway. So, they say about 10 feet for squashes and stuff, but I mean, that's about six feet, so yeah. Um, so let me get started. On my website, I have it listed for days and required um, dilutions, dilutions into the into the water. But I just usually eye it. But just for the sake of this video, I'll be using measuring. So this is a tablespoon, and I just take like a tablespoon. This is a five-gallon bucket. So I'll take like a, I'll take a tablespoon of this. I'll just pour it in there. One. And do another one here. Just do a tablespoon. And then I rinse it off. This is for a stick. What's that? I have good. So I rinse it off. I mean, I don't usually measure it out. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. But then I take this is the um, this is the Artemisia. So I only use a little bit of this. This is like medicine for this for it. So I only probably do just like a tiny drops. Of a tablespoon. Tablespoon drops. Tiny little drops. The reason why I use a lot of the, the banana is because that's what breaks down the chitin and it unleashes the carbon and allows you to store nutrients. So you can stack your nutrients, it doesn't run off. It doesn't go away because you just wasted all your money on synthetic ammonia, you know? This is what this does in the France. It helps create a carbon base in your soil. Because that's like the number one way to do it. So I'm just gonna pour this in here, I'm not gonna bother this is the um, this is the hemp. It smells so good. I love oh, it. Yeah, see that. This stuff it's hard for me to make because I don't have much hemp growing, and you know all these regulations and stuff makes it difficult to get it. So do what I can when I can. So just do a few drops. This is more medicine. Just do a few drops. That was a tablespoon in one, two, three, four, five, five gallons, tablespoon, just drip it in there. And just right with it with the banana, I always use a whole tablespoon. Whole tablespoon. Or more. I mean, why not be liberal if you can? If you can do it. I mean, you can make this at home if you want, but I do sell it because I know people, you know, some people want to buy. So 
So, all right, so now that was the juice, right? So now we're gonna add this. This is the calf solution. You do not want to use a lot of this. This is made out of vinegar and it can wreak, wreak havoc on your plants because vinegar is not good for plants. So you just, you just do a little, I'll, I'll switch the tablespoon here. I actually use a little bit less than that. I'd say like a, like a teaspoon, like a half a teaspoon. A teaspoon. Not even like, I'm just gonna, like half of a teaspoon, not even like. So a tiny bit, don't need much. Just you're adding a little bit to it. That's why this stuff, this stuff lasts forever. gives your plants support. You do this all the time. Every time you water, do it like once a week. This is what I do. And in between waterings, you know, just a few drops. It's like in the body, like when you use droppers and you take herbs and stuff, you know, you don't do the whole thing. You just do a little, a few drops at a time, you know, and that helps sustain your body. So that's that solution. So now we're done with that. Now we're going to add the frass. This is, this is like the biggest part. This is my trusty shovel. I found this on a beach, it like, it like literally washed up on the beach. I love it, my big. So, for this sake, I'm gonna show you guys in cups. You know, we can figure out later, but this is what I'll do it in cups. Usually I just pour it in there. So the five gallon buckets, I usually fill them up about two thirds. I'll just take a cup of this. One, two, three. I do four cups, because I grow it. I mean, I have the farm here, but you really only need probably two cups. Two cups would be good, you know? But I do four, because I can. I'll show you with my frass. Um, I feed my frass with carrots. And you can actually see the little carrots in there. I don't know if, if this camera will pick up the details, but you can see little bits of carrots, they're orange. And what this does is actually, I was reading, it, there's a synthesis with the chitinase, and it creates vibrant blooms. It enhances the pigmentation within the flowers. So you get extremely bright flowers. And what's great about that is because it's so bioactive, like you literally see it, in a, like a few hours or two or three hours after you water it, it'll just boom, just vibrate up, you know, like like neon. The plants are gonna look like vibrant neon lights. It's really amazing. And we tried it on some roses the other day and it worked really, really well. So after I mix those, um, I stir these up. I give them a good stir. Um, there is a really good, I want to, I have to buy this. It's an aerator and it's just, a, it hooks up to a, pump you know and then it, drip, it strips it drips um, or it pumps air into your mixture tea so it's constantly aerating it so it never stands still and that's probably that's I really like that but for some reason I do like having them stand still because then lactobacillus can easily get inside these and create a really intense tea and your plants will just absolutely love it I mean <laughs> I grow some pretty incredible plants here and I don't I do not buy any um, industrialized fertilizers I don't I make it myself I make all this at home and this is my goal I would love to teach people how to do this I like to do like a show maybe or like a seminar in person people get hands-on if you guys want to express interests in this absolutely let me know because I do want to expand this knowledge because this is KO farming mixed with K and F, Korean farming. These are methods, you know, that came out of Korea. 
But honestly, all the methods have been passed down for generations because farming is the way of life here. Because money might not grow on trees, but everything we need does. <laughs> so, let that, you know, all you predators out there change professions now. <laughs> so, this is the bin of frass. This is just collecting it. My brother helps me. The cameraman gives me a lot of gives me a lot of effort and hand with this. So it's all organic. Like I said, my brand has has carrots in it, so it does. Like it says, that special reaction with the carotenoid. And I have all that information on my website. You guys can check it out on my forum if you want. It's all in there. I, I list all my scientific research. I don't I don't hold any. If you guys want to know what I'm up to, come on come on in. The party. The party's going, the water is fine. Jump on in. So so these teas are done. They're done, I stirred them. They're gonna sit for one or two days, sometimes three days, depends on the heat. If it's really hot, I sometimes do it within one day. Within one day. So I'm gonna let these go. And uh, tomorrow I'll use them on my garden. Uh, if you wanna come look at some of my results, I'll show you the, the effectiveness of these teas. Let's keep it over. I planted five five vine plants, I guess, like with squashes and cucumbers, and now they're taking over my yard. Um, I didn't put anything up. I know you're supposed to put grapes up and stuff, but I just didn't do that. And I didn't expect this to happen like this, but it, it exploded. And uh, I have tomatoes over there. This is June, mid-July right now. And I have I have tomatoes growing already. I'll probably be able to pick tomatoes in August, which is which is exceptional for me. I love that. It's in early August because those are a wild. They all just grew. I didn't plant them. They grew, and I decided to nurse them. And I got tons of tomatoes growing. I'll have tomatoes really soon. And uh, it's just an incredible garden this year. And this is all organic. I don't I don't buy my nutrients anywhere. I use all what is around me. And. Uh, I get some really interesting results and I grow right near trees, always growing near trees is a huge, huge thing because you have tons of carbon base in the ground and right near the edge of a woodland is always the best place to grow and this is where I'm growing and it's uh, it's working really well, getting some really good good results here. It's like I just taking over my yard. I mean you see that, like you see all those squashes growing in there and stuff? They're all in there, all tons, tons of them. That's why I think it'd be great if I could build like a squash tunnel. That'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> like we can build like little arches that grow above this, you know, and then they like swoop, swoop over, but yeah. Okay. And we started these trees. This, these are trees from this year. We used our, our craft blends. These are fast and tree blends, and this is the first year. It came from stem, and it's doing really great. It's wonderful. And this is a this is a mulberry. Started brand new. We uh, figured we'd air. Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, air prune it. So as soon as we're ready to go, it'll be boop ready to go. And I'm super excited for this. We move them every once in a while, but. This is part. This is a frass. I've been using frass on this mulberry. So this is a walnut. This is a no. This the yeah, English walnut tree. This actually grows in our area. I was excited to grow this. Um, I think there's a hazelnut. We have a hazelnut. Yeah, this is this is a hazelnut. This actually like it's it's got some issues, but it's making it. It's making it. This this new growth up here looks great. It's going. It's getting there. Got a new shoot coming up. So this is another mulberry. This is another. This is another uh, walnut tree. So this all started with frass. We used a frass mixture blend. Our soil wasn't that great to begin with, but once I started adding my lactobacillus mixture and controlling the bacteria that was inside of it, I was able to eventually. Uh, once I got it outside, it, it naturalized immediately. So. 
it was tough because I started these indoors. These are all indoor starters. And it was a bit difficult in the beginning. But we got through it. We got through those difficult times. The plant survived. I fed it what it needed. And it's vibrant. It's here. It's doing well. So here we go. This is the first year growth. This thing is exploding. It's just, and it's, it's got to get planted. This needs to get planted now. You know, we can't wait anymore longer. But uh, if I had this in the ground, it'd be growing even faster. And, like, we're just waiting for right now to get some land cleared. So, all right. Well, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching. And thanks for sticking around and we look at my farm or my garden here and seeing what results occur. Thank you. Bye.